guys, this is Reptilians, and I have started breeding millworms, or sorry, superworms. So this is the setup that I have. It's just a six inch deep tub, and I've got the oat bran stuff in here, and as you can see, uh, I showed a picture a little bit ago of the first uh, pupates that I had. Now I've got a ton of them and I'm still working on more. Um, but my first two pupates I put in have actually, this one's hiding behind little can 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 canisters, have actually turned into beetles. Now I'm in the way of the light so let's see if I can get a better angle. So that one's darker, and this one must have just come out right before I went to pick them up. I've put them back in with the other superworms. I'm hoping that it'll be okay. I've seen some people put them back in with the superworms, and I've seen some people keep them separate. So I'm not exactly sure. This is all new to me. Um, but I figured I'd just let you know. Uh, this is how I'm keeping them. The superworms, apparently to get them to turn into beetles, you have to separate them. So I actually just went and bought this just, you know, fisherman tackle box. And I put up the little divides in between. And then I don't even have oat stuff in here. I'll take it off the ground. It's just the millworms. And, you know, between uh, 8 to 10 days, they all of a sudden will pupate which is what that looks like. I'm in this light again, I'm sorry. And then over time, I think it took like a week, maybe a week and a half, and then they turn into beetles. Then once they're beetles, they will actually breed. And then in the little food refuses, uh, which is probably why some people separate the beetles out, uh, but in the dried up fruit is apparently where they lay their eggs. So now that I have beetles, I can't throw away all my dried up fruit like I have been to keep the area clean. Um, so at some point, I might separate the group and take beetles out. That way, I don't throw away the food, because I don't like the food sitting in here. Sometimes it starts to mold. Like I've got, I put a strawberry in the other day, and that was probably not a good idea. As you can tell, I've got mold right there. So I got to get rid of that. But for now... It looks like it's going pretty well in here. I'll find out when I start getting new super worms. Um, I have some more pupates. Now these capsules here, I did add some oat brands to these ones, but you don't really need them. But they, they still pupated, so, you know, it still works. But these, these I just bought from the dollar store. They're like, six of them for a buck and they're just snap caps. I use them for when I go ant hunting too. I put the ants in there first and then I move them over test tubes when I get home. And this tackle box I think was like two and a half bucks so you know it's fairly easy and I, I don't feed them. I wasn't sure if you had to feed them while they were still in these but they've all survived so far. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, what I did was correct. I didn't feed them anything, so I think that probably helps. But yeah, so, super excited. My superworm colony has started, so hopefully I'll be able to start selling superworms at some point. And, um, yeah. I think they're just kind of cool. Uh, this one, this one looks really cool because he's still soft. His shell is still soft. So he's got like a brown circle on the back of him, but the rest of him's like tan. And this one's already hardened a little bit. Let me move that out of the way. So he's starting to go brown. I believe they turn black. So I'm waiting to see that. Yeah, so I just got a ton of them still left. And I'll dig some more super worms out here and fill up the spots that I just emptied because I had like two and then I think those two yeah anyways it's a 
fairly simple process. You don't even have to feed these soup. I uh, sorry, you do have to feed them. You don't have to give them water because they get all of their water from the vegetables and stuff that you feed to them in here. And I just throw in uh, it's a good idea to feed them things that you obviously want to feed your animals. So I have a bearded dragon who's sitting over there. It's not focusing on him. And he it's good things like um, collard greens are good for bearded dragons, uh, carrots, uh, cabbage. So I do just like a cabbage mix and it's got carrots and everything in it and they actually seem to really like that. But I also do the sliced up carrots, you know, just to make the pieces smaller. That way I actually have less to clean up. I've noticed that there's just not as much left over when I do the smaller items. Um, besides that, I do feed them collard greens, which I do also have next to me, uh, just to give them that extra nutrition. Sometimes I'll put fruit in here, like I said before, but the strawberries started to mold, so those might be too big. But I like doing blueberries. They're pretty small, and they actually get to them pretty quick, and they'll just be like a small ring. It'll look like a it'll look like a Cheerio when they get done, a purple Cheerio. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, so these guys are actually fairly re uh, fairly easy to take care of. So, but I figured I'd just kind of show you. Oh, the other thing is, is that generally you put a lid on these enclosures which I do have, uh, and they do actually have to breathe, but I use the little sides that clap on, that way it's just a little bit more secure, you know, I have a one-year-old, so he can pop these off easily if it's just a pop top, but you gotta make sure, like on here I have holes all over the place, you gotta have plenty of air holes, not only for ventilation, um, but it, it helps with mold too if you have a lot of air holes. Uh, but I did put them on the top and I kind of regret that now because I can't really put anything on top of it. Uh, but a better idea that I have seen is to actually drill the holes in the side of the enclosure. You got to do it high enough so that the superworms can't get to them. But if you do them in the side of the enclosure, you can actually stack multiple of these things on top of each other, which is what I might do in the future, like separate the beetles out. I might do three all together. Um, yeah, so that it's just really convenient, really easy. It's not even that wide. It's what, maybe two feet wide. So just really easy to take care of, and uh, they're really good for feeding like my bearded dragon or other creatures like that. I actually have ants too and when the colonies get big enough they will actually, let's see if I can focus on the beetle, the colonies will actually eat super worms so I can feed them to those so it'll be pretty nice. Yeah so that's pretty much what I have. Oh and uh, temperature wise 80 is a good number to keep them at so we'll see how that goes anyways thank you for watching if you liked this video please subscribe to my channels and give me a thumbs up and everything thank you